Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, March 26th, 2018, episode 47. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of action, hope, awareness, and yes, Maybe a little lulls, and we do have some lulls planned for you, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. And you can get show notes at istate.tv slash h047, which is also linked in the video description for both the Facebook and the YouTube versions. And today's show is titled, for those of you watching, you can read, and you can see today's show is titled, Will Meme for Food or Crypto? On today's head episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Get Paid to Troll, Terahertz Chips, Red Flag or Red, or red Flag on Red Flag Laws, Off Grid Fail, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Crypto-based social media app to pay you to post. Get paid to troll on the social medias. Uh, well, you can get paid for your time on one specific social media app, and it's called Apex. A-P-P-I-C-S. I don't know what it means. It's just Apex. It's just Apex to me. I'm just going to call it Apex. It's actually built on the Steam platform and the the app, not the, 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 the just the ICO of the app will launch. And for those of you who don't know, ICO just means initial coin offering. That's set to March launch this 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 coming Wednesday, March 28th. 2018 and the app will pay you in cryptocurrency for posting content that generates results like shares likes comments etc and it's, it's 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 actually not unlike what already exists but that doesn't exist in app form and that's on steam it and if you go to the show notes and you get to this article, you'll see that I say, it says, see my Steemit account by clicking here. Yes, uh, click on my Steemit account. And if you're on Steemit, follow me on Steemit. And if I post stuff on Steemit, upvote. I will also follow you back unless you have like really crazy things like my dog is living inside my head and is dictating my every move. I may not follow you. I may not. I'm, just, I'm not saying I won't. I'm just saying I may not. Uh, and uh, the Steam it, it's a blog platform that rewards you with Steam power when you get upvotes and comments and you convert the Steam power to Steam dollars. And then there's, what is it? Uh, is it Ethereum? Or I think it's Ethereum or Litecoin. Litecoin? I mean, I don't know which one it is. No, I can't remember. But there is cryptocurrency that you can uh, exchange for it. And then, of course, you can exchange for for fiat dollars, the dang old fiat dollars. So this story is from the Merkle.com. Apex is following in the footsteps of others who have used crypto to reward those who post popular content, but will completely revolutionize the concept by paying ordinary users as well, returning the value of the network back to the content creators and curators. I, I'm going to repeat that. I really enjoyed saying that. We'll completely revolutionize. Oh, I really enjoyed that. My wife tells me she doesn't like when I do the voices, but I'm doing the voices anyway. I don't care. So the startup, which has its ICO set for March 28th and plans to launch, it, launch its app in alpha mode in Q3 2018. That would be the third quarter of 2018, so like, like maybe around October-ish or so. Hopes to introduce the average social media user to the crypto world with an easy user experience and the promise of a more generous and transparent distribution of rewards. And I'm probably going to speak more of this on probably is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander. It's probably going to be our off-leash segment. 
I don't know what will happen between now and then. It might bump it out, but I'll just speak briefly and say I put this in our action headline today. So if you go to our site, you'll see this is the top story, action story, because this I I think uh, the 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 greatest work that is being done to advance the cause of liberty to tilt the balance of power towards individual and individuals and free associations is done by a lot of folks who call themselves uh, crypto anarchists. Uh, and I don't know if this guy's a crypto anarchist. It's the guy from Steam. It. I don't, I don't know his full story, but uh, the, these folks, uh, they're not bickering with people online and debating this or debating that or uh, looking for legislation to save them or politicians to save them. No, they're just building stuff. They're just building stuff that empowers individuals and free associations. And, and this is one of these platforms that could potentially do that. So that's why... I featured it in the action category today. Get ready for the mega powerful terahertz computer chip. Physicists from Hebrew University of Jerusalem have developed a terahertz microchip that will increase the power and speed of today's computers. As they say, this is their claim. I'm not saying they're totally accurate, but I'm just going to say it. And I'm going to say this with dramatic effect as well, because it I think it needs a dramatic effect statement. 100 fold. That's right. You will be able to meme with the power of a 100 fold powered computer. Imagine how many memes you can do in one day, because it's all about memes, folks. Let's not kid ourselves. So, this is from Science Daily. Smaller and faster, the terahertz computer chip is now within reach. Following three years of Extensive research. Hebrew University of Jerusalem physicist Dr. Uriel Levy and his team of fellow geek lords and lordettes, or geek, can I, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to be totally, uh, totally uh, all feminists on you. And I'm going to say his uh, fellow geek queens and queenettes. Yeah, I'm going to call them men queenettes. There you go. There you go, feminist. That was for you. Uh, have created technology that will enable our computers and all optic communication devices to run 100 times faster through terahertz mi microchips. So until now, the two major challenges that stood in the way of creating terahertz microchips were overheating and scalability. However, these guys, they, they, they figured a way, they think, to... To, to stop that. So if they've actually done that, if they've stopped the overheating problem and they've made these things scalable, dudes, dudes, dudes. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have a computer that is more powerful than all the computers of the world. Com okay, that might be a little hyperbolic there. But anyway, it's exciting news. It's uh, grand news. It's uh, putting in the hands of individuals and free associations tremendous processing power. Imagine what can be done if more individuals and free associations have access to much more powerful processing power than they have. Can powerful processing power? Okay. Yeah, that's a sentence. Paul just said powerful processing power. And I'm going to, you know what, if somebody wants to put that on a t-shirt, uh, hashtag uh, uh, trademark, give me my cut. Is USA Today writing content marketing for anti-gun groups pushing red flag laws? I'm going to kind of dip into this. I'm not going to go into this in full because this is going to be a story that we're going to cover tonight on uh, Is Daily Monday with uh, uh, Professor Rambo. And that is on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And I have the link in uh, the video descriptions. And if you're listening on audio, uh, just do a a search in Facebook for Liberty Principle Facebook page and be sure you like it so you can listen to us tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll go into this story in a little bit more detail, but uh, this story is basically, it's a story of uh, USA Today's, well, it's a twofold story. One is it's a story of how more states are passing these so-called red flag laws and red flag laws are basically your neighbor, your, your family, uh, a law enforcement official can go to a judge and say, dude's dangerous or dangerous to himself or herself. And, and pretty, pretty easily then they can send out goons to your house to take your guns from you. And, uh, the way that this article is written, which we'll talk about more tonight on the show, 
this is written as a straight news story, but the story itself, it really sugarcoats and uh, sterilizes and, 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 and sanitizes, I'll say. It sanitizes what red flag laws are, and it covers all of the support of the red flag laws, including giving coverage to every town against gun violence uh, and uh, Giffords. I guess it's just called Giffords, Kathy Giffords or Kathy Giffords, whatever, you know, the the, the representative lady person. <laughs> Why can't I think of her name? Uh, whatever. The Giffords woman. The Giffords woman. <laughs> you know, the, basically there are two billionaire-funded groups that are anti-human, anti-liberty, and anti-gun. It gives their perspectives. doesn't give any other perspectives besides that. And it's written in a way that uh, it, 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 it tries to come off as a straight news piece, but it's really just agitprop for the progressive state media. You can read the article by going to the show notes, or you can listen tonight as uh, Professor Rambo and I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot to say to this, to this woman, Nicole Gaudiano. English off-the-grid community felled by regulations and zoning laws. So this is a story on itself, face that well, it's, a, it's not a good story. But I'm I'm going to tell you that this is a good story. It's not a good story for this community. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing good about this story for this community. But in the whole, for individuals such as myself that favor empowering individuals and free associations, this is actually a good story, and I'll get to why. So it's a community in Dartmoor, England, that's serving as yet another example of the pitfalls of attempting to build outside of the network that the coercive enterprise controls. And let me, let me put it in plainer words. People came together and attempted to build and run a community off-grid, one that was not dependent on the power grid or water grid, my term, of the coercive enterprise, the state. The community was doing just fine until the regulators and zoning inspectors came along, effectively ending the experiment in self-reliant, self-sustaining living. And again, this is bad. That part's bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's bad. But there are two pos positive aspects for this story. And the first positive aspect is this. I'm seeing more and more of these stories. Uh, you know, I, I watch for things like this. I have a methodology that I use where... I, I comb through about, I don't know, depending, somewhere around you know 2,000 to 3,000 headlines a day. I'm combing through and looking for stories that I'm going to talk about and write about. And I am seeing more and more of these, these off-the-grid community stories. And uh, this is just indicative of, of that trend. And, and so from my perspective, what I'm seeing is more and more people are starting to catch on that in order for them to actually live the lives of their choosing, not impeded by arbitrary threat of force uh, that, that will attempt to alter their actions, actions that are not directly harming others, they're turning to the, the off-the-grid path. And that's what these folks did. But they ran into the same problem that many, many other off-the-grid communities are running into, and that is... Regulations, zoning, laws, all kinds of, you know, state interference. But this story, to me, this is showing people, this is showing folks that may pick this path, two things. One, if you're going to start an off-the-grid community, do it on the down low. Do it in a stealth mode. Don't broadcast what you're doing. I mean, I would even, I would even say if you're going to have an off-the-grid community, make sure you're still hooked up to the grid. They don't need to know that there's other parts that you're actually using that are not part of the grid. Or maybe even, you know, you use a bare amount of electricity just to whatever, you know, uh, not have them raise any uh, red flags wondering, hey, they're not using any electricity. Uh, and then the other, uh, other possibility is you just need to pick more remote places where you won't run into those issues. So... Yeah, this story to me, this is a positive story. I'm excited about it. I'm not excited about the end result for this poor community, but I am excited about what it means as far as trends and also what it's showing folks as to, you know, maybe maybe take a different path because this direct and open path, it's failing over and over again. Flat Earth Rocket Man launches and survives. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This is your Daily Lulls. The Flat Earth Evangelist and Self-Made Rocket Mad, Mad Mike Hughes. I mean, dude, your name is Mad Mike Hughes. It's, you're cool. I, I mean, you're cool in my book if your name is Mad Mike Hughes. Unless, you know, the mad is because you, you like to chew off ears from, uh, you know, human beings while they're alive. Or, for that matter, chewing off ears of human beings while they're dead. Either way, if you're chewing off human ears and that's how you get the name Mad, no, you're not cool. But I think this guy has the title Mad because <laughs> he's freaking cool. Uh, the Flat Earth Evangelist and self-made rocket mad Mad Mike Hughes successfully launched his rocket, achieving a height of 1,875 feet. And he's working towards eventually getting to space so he can prove once and for all that the Earth is flat. Now, I absolutely admire his commitment to prove a flat earth theory. And I will say, you know, I'm, you know, I, I got to give it to him. Yeah. He's not just sitting behind a keyboard typing stuff like NASA lies. Everybody lies. Look at this. Look at these, uh, look at these charts. <laughs> now, the moon, moon landing is a fake. And I can show you these Photoshop pictures of Photoshop pictures. <laughs> uh, he's out there actually trying to prove it. I, I mean, I'm, I would really love to see if we could get some explorers out there that can uh, go ahead and swim on towards the other shelf. And this isn't about whether the earth is flat or not. That's not the pur purpose of this Daily Lulz. The purpose of this Daily Lulz is to highlight that this dude has a belief. And rather than being a keyboard warrior, nothing wrong with keyboard warriors. I'm kind of one myself, so I don't want to come down too hard on him. But uh, rather than be a keyboard warrior, he strapped himself onto a stick of dynamite and launched himself 1,875 feet into the air. And uh, he's, he's working on getting to that to, to space, and he wants to be able to prove once and for all. And uh, <laughs> I do have a feeling, though, that uh, uh, if he does achieve space height levels, that he's going to see that the earth is indeed a globey globes and then he'll send it back pictures with the curve but don't worry don't worry i'm sure if that happens that he'll send photos back and i already know the response hillary clinton got to him he's he's now just a fed plant <laughs> that's that's probably what you will get so it's but but on the other side maybe you know if he proves that the earth is flat maybe that will be a response from from the globies they'll say or this is fake so probably won't settle anything other than it is own mine but there you have it catalan's protest after germans arrest pujamon so it seems that the germans have decided to do the bidding of the thuggish regime of spain They've arrested the former president of Catalonia, Carlos Puigdemont, and intend on turning him over to the Spanish who have a warrant for his arrest. And he'll face charges of treason and inciting riots, which are the uh, go-to favorite charges of thuggish regimes, since such things as thuggish regimes existed. So the Catalans have responded by protesting across Catalonia, where the Spanish thug regime sent out its goon to, goons to rough people up, injuring 89 people and arresting four others. And if you're not following the Catalonia story, the Catalans, well, they want to be independent from Spain. I mean, this is a long-going imbroglio. And they recently had a referendum when Carlos Puigdemont, Carlos Puigdemont was president. And uh, then the Spanish sent in their goons to shake them down. And they still carried forth with a referendum. On the day of the election, the Spanish goons were roughing people up. And uh, the people still voted. And they voted in favor of the referendum. And the Spanish declared it illegal. And it declared Puigdemont illegal. And uh, they arrested some leaders. Other leaders fled, such as Puigdemont, and then they had another election, and their parliament was, uh, well, even after all the Spanish did, uh, the parliament was still pro-independence, so when they came time to select their president, all well, the Spanish won't let them select the president that they want. So, there you go. <laughs> I hope that uh, caught you up to, to, to current events on Catalonia. And if you're not following Catalonia, I strongly recommend that you do. I'm following it with regularity. New understanding of sodium application in solar cells offers promise 
of greater efficiency. So researchers at the University of Luxembourg are discovering that some of the assumptions that have been made about solar cell manufacturing in the last 20 years, well, they aren't exactly correct. The discovery offers opportunities to enhance the efficiency of solar cells by designing them with the new understanding built in. And the crux of the issue has to do with the application of sodium. And this is from phys.org. So in the past, scientists, well, they knew that sodium uh, added to the light absorb. Well, if they added sodium to the light absorbing later, that, that improved uh, the performance of the cell, but they were under the assumption that you had to add it after, uh, after they added everything else. It was the last part, but by using a different approach, researchers from the physics, physics and material science research unit at the university of Luxembourg, along with four international partners now were able to show that the truth is more nuanced and uh, essentially, it, it, it is that in this work, we show that if the absorber is made of only one grade, adding a small amount of, so of sodium helps to homogenize the distribution of the elements. And I'm going to rush forward here. Uh, China runs Air Force drill over Japanese islands in South China Sea. So tensions in the South China Sea continue to remain high with China running Air Force drills that cross over Japanese southern islands. And finally, new superconducting material defies known scientific materials. So the researchers at the US, U.S. Department of Energy, SLAC, National Accelerator Laboratory, and Stanford University are investigating material that is super, a superconductor, but it acts in a way that doesn't follow accepted theory. Boom. And if you're new to the show, what you have to realize is, uh, well, first off, I'm like, I'm not an absolutarian in general, but I'm not absolute about my non absolutarianness isness Absolutarianism-ness. -is. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I am absolutarian about one thing. It's 20 minutes timed. 20 minutes and 20 minutes only. And when that clock hits zero, boom, you're done, man. You're done. That's all. It's all that I'm willing to give. So that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 26, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to istate.tv slash ho 47 now you can also find our podcast show, Headlines You May Have Missed, on iTunes and Stitcher. You can search for Headlines You May Have Missed. I, if you search for iState, I think you can find it as well. And that version of the show, it's just that 20 minutes, that time 20 minutes. That's the audio version of the show. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show, and you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. And... Uh, We'll see if this is the page I end up switching to or if I go back to the page that I've been using. If you're watching on YouTube, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. And don't forget to join me tonight on News Daily Monday with Professor Rambo at, at roughly 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes Professor Rambo is a little late. On the Liberty Principle Facebook page, the page is linked in the video description. And tonight's show is titled Killing the 2A with Lawfare. As always, remember... Those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.